Hey guys, it's Stephanie from Stephanie's Tiny X's and I am here today to talk cross stitch. Second take. So let's hope this goes well. <laughs> um, so it's been an interesting couple of weeks. I'm coming to you on a Friday instead of a Thursday. Um, I had hoped to get this done last night, but it's been a heck of a week. It's been a heck of a couple of weeks actually. Um, and I have I am hosting my sister's baby shower tomorrow so I took today off to finish up baby shower stuff and that is done for the most part now um, so I thought I'd film this real quick because I do not want to get out of the habit of every two weeks I think every two weeks is good for me um, I don't necessarily want to do bi-monthly I don't necessarily want to do monthly I feel like if I did monthly my videos would be like an hour and a half long and while some people want to yeah I like to try to keep them around 30 to 40 minutes uh, but yeah, so it's been an interesting couple of weeks. Um, I can't remember if this was in the last video or not, but we did not have internet for five days, five days. It was like a week basically is what it amounted to. It went down on a Sunday night and, um, we got home Monday and figured out that it was down and they told us it was for scheduled maintenance. 6 p.m. on a Monday, you're doing scheduled maintenance. That doesn't sound right, but whatever. You're Comcast, you kind of just do whatever you want. But um, So it was out for like three days. And then it came back on, and then we had it for like three hours, and then it went back down for like another two and a half, three days. So it was miserable, because our cable is through PlayStation View, which means it streams. It's like Netflix or Amazon Prime, also, which we did not have. <laughs> so we were relegated to Blu-rays and DVDs. Yeah, first world problems, y'all. There's gonna be a lot of that in this one, let me tell you. Because this week, leading up to the baby shower, was supposed to be at home so I could finish this because I'm doing a lot of it myself. And that's just because of my personality type, not for a lack of help. Um, but then Monday, my car, my husband's car broke down again second time in two months so yeah we're wonderful batting average at 17 years old um, but the brake line the back brakes went out completely dumped all of the fluid in the parking lot so no brakes at all <laughs> so that night his boss was thankfully drove him halfway so I met him halfway so it ended up being an hour round trip instead of a two-hour round trip um, Tuesday he had a half day he went out to the dealership and found a car that he liked. It was a good deal. We are leasing, which yes, I know, I know. I've heard it. It's okay. <laughs> Trust me, I asked all the right questions and right now it's what works for us. Um, so we test drove it, decided that yeah, we needed to do this because we'd put $500 in the car, 17 years old in the last two months and we were done, done putting any more money into it. Um, that was after an $1,800 car repair in February. So $2,300 into a 17 year old car. We were done. Um, so we decided to go ahead and lease and we signed on the car yesterday, Thursday morning. Um, but basically what that equates to is a whole lot of days spending time doing stuff that had not been my intention and I have not stitched barely at all this week. So it's a good thing that I waited to do this every two weeks now because now I have at least a decent amount of progress to show you. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, since um, baby shower tomorrow, I know. I know you're here for the cross stitch, but this is so cute. These, oh well. I'll insert a picture of the centerpieces because it's not assembled yet because it'll move around before it gets there. But trust me, it's cute. And I'm gonna try using iMovie this time to edit my video so I can insert pictures so that you can see the things that I'm talking about. We shall see. But then, I made these little napkins. They're little bow tie napkins. Aren't they adorable? Yeah. It's one thing that was not a Pinterest fail, thank God. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow I'll be busy. Um, I won't get a lot of stitching time in this weekend. Uh, baby shower in the morning, afternoonish. Um, 
and then we'll have a hockey game tomorrow night. So I'm, I have already declared Sunday a day of rest. I don't care how many dishes there are. I don't care how much laundry there is. I do not care. This week has been hellacious. It's been horrible. Horrible. So I started to plan November after seeing Jessie Marie does stuff. She uh, has her like Outlook planner or calendar type thing. I keep mine in my Erin Condren life planner folder. It says motivation comes from within. And I'll probably put other stuff in here eventually, but right now it just holds my schedule, which I shared on Instagram. But this is kind of what I hope to accomplish in November. Now, basically this week right here, where I'm supposed to be working on Giant Harry Potter has been a big joke because picking up the husband from broken car, um, looking at car, I don't even remember what happened Wednesday something happened but I wasn't home until seven I mean that's been my week all week so I need to get caught up on my progress for uh, giant Harry Potter but basically last month in October I only worked on the one project and I feel like that affected my stitchy bug because I didn't I wasn't I don't think I was motivated I love the project but I think I do there for a while I didn't think that I was a rotation person because I didn't think that I could do it um, but I now having only stitched on one project, I think I need that variety in my life. So I started with Lakeside Needlecraft or Lakeside Needlecraft Fantasy Stitch Along um, this month because I wanted to see some progress on that, and I really want to keep up to date with it. My toothless needle minder. So last month, when I started November first, I will insert a picture here so I had the November circle done or no November circle was partially done and uh, sorry guys and I had some of the top row done turns out top row was wrong so I had originally planned to do the borders first to make sure that I didn't mess up and that everything lined up. Yeah, well, that ended up messing everything up. So I had to frog out the entire first page that I had done. I mean, it wasn't an entire page yet, but it would have been had I kept going. But this is where we are after a week's worth of progress and that includes a bunch of frogging. So I have all of my circles done, the borders for the circles, and I started over here and I have that border done, or the blue. And then I plan to, when I pick this up again, um, I plan to finish the inner blue border and then I will go around and do the detail work in the border and then I'll go around and do the old or outer border. I just can't trust myself enough to count right now. After having seen that mistake, I don't want to do something similar and make that same mistake. So lesson for me is you either start in the top and you stay in the top or you start in the center and you work your way out from the center. You do not travel until you're more comfortable because that was a pain. I started brogging on October 30th I think is what it was and I frogged the entire thing I was up until 11 o'clock because naturally I couldn't let it go I knew it was there and that's how I work so um, Lakeside Needlecraft Fantasy Stitch Along that will be uh, that will be my piece that I work on should I complete the other goals <laughs> considering this week I now have actually to focus back on giant Harry Potter until I'm caught up with those goals because I want to meet those goals. So speaking of giant Harry Potter, I'm going to move you now so that you can see my progress because it's on my Lowry frame and it's on my key snap and I really don't feel like moving it. So, um, now I'll show you instead of inserting a picture since, uh, okay. So this is where I'm at. Now, the last time that you saw it, I had finished over to here so all of this was what I worked on this past week 
Um, now, the goal was for this week to finish up that blue leaf over there. There's a bronze ball that goes in between the two blue leaves. And then to start over on the Gryffindor banner. Well, that didn't happen because I was in the middle of buying. I didn't even tell you. I didn't even tell you what we got. Duh. 2016 Nissan Sentra. It's pretty nice. Um, it's the first new car that my husband and I have ever owned. Um, but yeah. I feel like this is coming from a 2000 Chevy Malibu, which had a CD player. Yeah. So, it's pretty nice. I'm excited. I like it. And it's what I have to drive, so. It is what it is. So, for my upcoming plans for the next two weeks, let me check my schedule here. So, I want to finish the Gryffindor banner, the Harry Potter logo, and one of the key sets. Um, that was my goal to have done by the 13th, which, ha, 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 like I said. Funny girl. But seriously, after this baby shower and after... I, I, I want no problems. Swear to God. Swear to Bob. Okay. So then, the next piece that I wanted to work on in the third week of um, November is my Back to the Future piece by Clouds Factory. This was a piece that I started for my husband, I think, back in, like, August. It's a while ago. I definitely remember working on it through the summer. July or August, I can't remember which one. But I'm pretty close, actually, if you really want to know the truth. I'm going to have to iron it. But this is where I'm at. So really, I just have to finish off the DeLorean, and it'll be done. And there's not much more to go. So that is, and I mean, I scheduled out a whole week because I really wanted to make sure that I got this finished. And by finished, it's going to be framed and it's going to go into his office at the bank. So that is my plan for next week. And like I said, it shouldn't take that long. So what I'm going to do and... It falls neatly into the cross stitch. It's fun friends challenge because, or friendship challenge, because Doc Brown and Marty McFly are the best of friends. Their friendship is kind of a special one. So once I finish that, then I'm gonna come back to Giant Harry Potter because I really wanna make sure that I get that, that done. So the goal for that would be, like I said, the banner, the HP, and the silver key. Um. Then, if I finish that, then I can start on Lakeside Needlecraft. Stitch along. Get some more broader work done. And then the week after that, so I'll be working on that up until the 23rd of November, which... Oh, crap. My next video is supposed to be on the 24th, which is Thanksgiving. Which means I'll probably be coming to you again on the 25th. So, it is what it is. But, anywho. So third week or fourth week um it'll be the Hufflepuff banner because that's the next banner in line and then also there is a um there's two keys in that section and I want to get the second key done then um usually I have these what the there we go all right so this is a stitch along that I had started with Jesse Marie does stuff way back, way back when, when I thought cross stitching was something that really didn't take a whole lot of time to finish a project. And I was all like, yeah, let's do this. And then like, it took me two weeks, maybe I think to get in a hundred stitches and I kind of felt bad because we had decided to work on this and we were gonna do the stitch along and then I I guess I just did not realize how much work cross stitch could be and how much time it needed to take because I'm a slow stitcher so I'm digging that back up 
um, to work on. Uh, it's one of, it falls in for the challenge, um, cross stitch, it's fun's challenge. I'm in stitch what's, um, so I'm really aiming more to try to work in some of those things for challenges so I can get my house points. Um, I am in puffle stitch, which is really kind of funny because I was sorted, okay, well first I was sorted into Ravenclaw with the first Pottermore, then I was sorted into Hufflepuff. And I'm in Puffle Stitch, so I still stick by the fact that I am a Ravenpuff or a Hufflepuff. But anyhow, what it is, is mini curl up with a good book. That is what we were supposed to stitch, and I totally bailed. And like three years later, I still feel horrible about that. Uh... But this is falling into the challenge for the thankful challenge, something you're thankful for. And books have always, always been a big part of my life. And I tell you what, sometimes the right book finds you at the right time and just changes, can change your perspective on things. It can educate you in ways that you wouldn't experience otherwise. And for a girl who grew up in the Midwest of Illinois in a town with a population of 3,600 at its height. God, I needed escape. I mean, <laughs> it's not a bad place to grow up, but it is awfully boring. So books were a huge part of my life. They're still a huge part of my life. It is something that I am incredibly thankful for and the people who do it. So it falls into that challenge and it's books and it'll be my first aid. I am going to rip out all of those. Yeah, all of those. I'm going to rip out that block and then I'm going to try to grid because I want to make sure that I get that right this time and I'm going to be patient about it this time. If there's anything that I've learned is that cross, cross stitch takes patience. So I will frog those hundred stitches and then I'm going to grid. I think I'm only going to grid the first page. I think that I only have the patience and tolerance to grid one page at a time. And then I will work on that. And the goal is to get to 2,000 stitches, which means I'll have to do 300 stitches a night. And I don't know how unrealistic that is. I haven't actually timed myself. I just know that I can see progress. Like, if I'm determined, such as like the Lakeside Needlecraft Fantasy Stitch Along, like, I didn't move very quickly with that at first, but once I realized that I had messed up and I was determined to get those circles done and get them right, I had it whipped together in a week, which is very quick for me. So, those are my goals for the next, next couple of weeks. So haul. I am super, super excited, guys, for these. I, of course, Danielle, the Stitcherista, such an enabler. Love that girl. Go give her some love. She could probably use cheerful thoughts, so go send her some. But because of her grime guard talk, I went ahead and ordered two grime guards. I'm not going to undo them. You'll be able to see the pattern, but um, they're an 11 by 17 key snap. And this one is the Legend of Zelda comics that she has on her, on her Etsy shop. And it came with the uh, Triforce, the Hyrulean Triforce. Needle minder. Super stoked about that. And then, um, and I tried to put this on my Harry Potter, and it just, <laughs> it wasn't gonna happen, guys. Uh, but this is the Harry Potter sketch fabric that she has. And I just, I love it. Love it, love it. And then I got Harry fabric covered needle minder. Now, 
once I got these, because I mean, really though, you can't fit a yard of fabric in anything. So it just kind of chills. Maybe once I get the border done and I can cut it down to size, then I'll be able to use it because a yard is a crazy lot of fabric. Worked just fine for my um, Lakeside Needlecraft Fantasy Stitch Along. So great, great grime, grime guards. Really happy about the quality. Ordered four more for my Millennium Frames that will be coming in at some point, sometime. I don't know. Um... So I ordered those. Now, I didn't necessarily like the fabrics that she had, so I private messaged her and said, listen, there's some different fabric fabrics that I would like to use for these uh, scroll rods, but it's not listed. Can you use these other fabrics? And she's like, oh yeah, just let me know. And she was super easy to work with. Definitely, definitely suggest it. She was awesome. Then, I was briefly a part of Sparkly's Fabric of the Month, not because of any fault of hers, but because of the new car situation. We're trying to make some cuts, so um, since I don't stitch quickly enough, I had to drop Fabric of the Month, but I, have, I received October's, and then I went ahead and paid for November's because I had not told her ahead of time, so... But, you know, I think sometimes that light just, no, that is, nope. It's funny how your camera, there, no, it keeps shifting, but it, uh, it's kind of like a purpley, brownish, I would almost call it a dusky rose. If I had to, I, and see, it's not, it's making it look yellower and greener than it actually is. Um, that is probably more true to color over here if it would stop flexing, but, um, it is gorgeous. I don't necessarily, maybe I could put one of, uh, I don't know if the piece is big enough, but I would say it would probably be good for, a uh, Nora Corbett fairy, which I do have, but I also already bought the best fabric for that, but it's in 28 count, uh, Brittany, which is what they call Lugana. 28 count Lugana is 28 count Brittany in the UK. So there is that. And actually, I don't need that anymore. I'm trying to get my stash organized for stitch from stash, stitch, stitch from stash 2017 trying to kit up projects so that I know what I have, what I need to get yet, because I don't think I'm ready for a warm-up, guys. Now, there will be one, one thing on my, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Exception on Stitch From Stash for me, and that's because I have to pay the other half of my Millennium Frame order. And they don't invoice you until they're ready to ship. So I'll have to pay for that whenever it comes. And I can't. Okay. So I had this awful experience with ABC. Stitch therapy, ABC, stitch something. I don't know. In Texas. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. But um, it was just one horrible god awful miscommunication after the other but basically what ended up happening is that i was told that um and uh jen from Mal delicious threads also had the same kind of experience we were told that it was out of stock and it would take 10 to 14 business days to get in stock and i can be totally patient once i know what's going on um so I was like, all right, fine, whatever. 10 to 14 days, it is what it is. So day 16, business day 16, no shipping notification, nothing. So I emailed and asked to cancel it because it's been 16 business days. Like it's been a month since I've ordered this. And um, so... 
I, I asked them to cancel it, and they responded fairly quickly and said that they would cancel it. Then maybe... I think it was within an hour. It might have been within two. But it was it definitely within the same, like, four-hour time span because this was um, in the morning. And she said, hey, just so you know, the threads are in the store. That was the exact wording. Threads are in the store. Do you still want this order? And I said, yeah, that's fine. If you've got, if you've got the threads, it's fine. It's not a big deal, whatever. So, um... Because it was for Petite Treasure ba Braid and there was only four, I kind of asked him to knock down shipping since we had this big long thing and it's four Petite Treasure Braids, braids and they charge seven fifty. So I just asked him to knock some off of that and they did. It was great. Items will ship out on Monday. That was the last thing that I heard. Monday morning, I get a notification. Your order or your, here's your refund. You know, basically saying this is your refund. Huh? Now, when I had asked to cancel the order, he told me that the credit card hadn't been charged because they don't charge until they ship. And I was just like, what? what? <laughs> All right. So I start another conversation in there. And I said, listen, this is about this order. This is what happened. What is going on? I just, I really need to know whether or not to expect these. And I get an email back saying that I had canceled the order after talking to the manager. So it's like they got it backwards and I was just like, I was done. I don't, I don't care if it's not coming. That's fine. I'll find it somewhere else. I just needed to know whether or not it was coming. <sighs> so that was I'll. It's going to be a bit before I can order from them again. So regardless, after that happened, I was in the, one of the Google hangouts and, um, turns out, that um one of two of the women um were from a town about two hour an hour and a half away from me and they had an lns and i was like what because i was convinced that the most that the closest lns to me would be in chicago which is a four hour drive this is an hour and a half away it's like yes and they have an online store i was like what Awesome. So then I call because I just had this experience with an LNS and their online store. And she says, no, whatever we have in stock is what it shows that day unless I've sold it since this morning. Awesome. Let's do this. Now, mind you, this was during all of the ABC stitch stuff going on. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to order what I can from here. And if I ended up getting duplicates, whatever. It's fine. So I got um, gold and the silver petite treasure braid. And then to make the shipping worth it, I got the Just Cross Stitch Halloween edition. Now, I ordered this on a Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock. I had it in my mailbox Monday morning, and I'm not exaggerating. Now, granted, they're only an hour and a half away from me. But that woman's turnaround time for shipping stuff out is insane. Because I then ordered after the whole thing with, uh, once I realized that I wasn't going to be getting the other two, I had to end up ordering it for from her. And to be honest, I would rather give her the money. Um, but what ended up happening is she didn't have them in stock. The other two petite treasure braids that I needed. And so I said, hey, is it possible that you can order these in for me? She said, yeah, sure. It'll be about mid-November before I place an order, but I'll get them to you if you can wait that long. And I said, sure, why not? You know, because at this point I was like, I'll just stitch what I can on Giant Harry Potter and then I'll go back in and do the Petite Treasure Braid later because I'm about ready to lose my temper on this project. So I ended up getting, this is like a black silver. I don't know if you can tell, but it definitely has... A blackish here maybe if I hold up the two beside each other you'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly but this is silver here and then this is the black silver and then um, bronze and then to make that worth it I love love these chalkboard designs um, this one is uh, hands-on designs and those are Christmas ornaments for chalkboard and I think it came with the um, 
the leaves, maybe. I haven't opened it to actually see what's in there. But I ordered some slate from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie, and the small piece, and I should be able to, that should, that should be in sometime soon. Which I am now a member of her fabric of the month, and I will be keeping hers because I love Stephanie's fabrics, and it takes a little bit, oh man, you let go. Ugh. And it takes some time to get onto her fabric of the month. So I'll be keeping that one. That is going to be my one, you know, constant source of fabric. So then um, I stopped by Joanne's the night that the car broke down. And I was getting ribbon for the baby shower. And I picked up the uh, Christmas ornaments. There were quite a few in there. I think the one that really caught my eye, and I've had a hard time finding on Etsy, and I would like to get it stitched for my dad for Christmas. Kind of encourage him for a... What's that? To get a Christmas tree. Maybe. Well, now I can't find it. It's in here because I flipped through it last night. There it is. Close. Is this tree right here. So, um, I would imagine that on some navy blue fab fabric with some silver. This has been my life, I'm telling you. I just dropped all of my petite treasure braid. So, um, I imagine like on a navy fabric. I don't know if I could stitch it all in treasure braid. I've never worked with treasure braid. Um, I've heard that as I get up all close, <laughs> that uh, treasure braid is easier to work with than Krennic. And I've also never worked with Krennic. So then I got this in yesterday um, because of the stitch from stash and the fact, itchy nose, that's a real thing guys. Um, because I'm going to be stitching from stash and I do really want to kind of do it for the entire year and not just the first six months, I want to organize all of the projects that I have because when I started, um, you know, casually cross stitching, apparently I felt that I had to kit up every pattern that I bought. So I've got those. And then a lot of my other projects just kind of require, um, DMC. Um, not a huge, not huge into beading yet. Um, I imagine when I do my first Mira, that's going to be a bit of, I wouldn't say a challenge, but maybe more time consuming than I'm used to. So we'll see. We'll see. But most of it requires just straight up DMC, which I have a full line of, and then I have extras galore. So I, so my stitch from stash, I'm kind of just expecting to maybe have to buy a piece of fabric here or some DMC there. But in order to have those projects ready to go, I bought 300 floss away bags so that I can finish kitting up. Because when I kit up, it is a full kit. So like, this is a fully kitted uh, giant, giant Harry Potter. So like each color and symbol has its own floss away pack. This is times two. I'm not gonna take out the other stack because it's the same. So, and then each, and I got this idea from Jessie Marie Does Stuff on the Facebook group Stitch Mania when I asked how people did their um, floss for projects. So that is the, the name of the project, the symbol, the color, and then the name, and husband is home. And then I just put like four arm lengths of floss in there, ready to use. So, organization is in progress. Hello, husband. And then I got another 11 by 17 Q-snap. What are those? Yes, I know. They know. I'm talking to you. He bought new fish. I buy cross-stitch. He buys fish. So, 
I wanted another 11 by 17 frame because I have this one over here that has Harry, giant Harry Potter on it. Um, because I am establishing daily goals, once that daily goal is done, then at least with giant Harry Potter, it's daily goals. Um, if I get that daily goal done, then I can move to Lakeside Needle Craft Fantasy Stitch Along, which is my extra once everything is done for the week. And it's it'll interchange fairly quickly. I hate changing fabric, which is why I bought the Millennium Frames and they're not here yet, but I hate changing fabric. Especially since those Q-snaps can break your nails off. Crazy quick. So that's it for haul. I think all that leaves is books. So, the last time we talked, I was reading Gemina. I always forget to turn that down. There we go. That's better. I was reading Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I finished this book. It was just as good as the first book. It was a five star read and if you read a lot especially if you read a lot of young adult in those trilogies the second book usually suffers from second book syndrome that's a thing like usually the second book is just to advance the plot for the third book you in the first book you have the introduction to the world and something to overcome and usually by the end of it they overcome the smaller of the bigger goals then the second book just furthers that plot so that in the third book you get that big finale ending. This one did not. Um, like I said, it's a multimedia thing. It is great. If you want to read something that's... It's science fiction. I wouldn't even call it fantasy. It is straight up science fiction and I am not a science fiction fan, but that was an amazing book and an amazing series. Then next up I read Happily Ever After by Kiera Cass. This is a uh, bind up of her novellas for the series. I had actually already read all of those. I just got this, um, I won't go into too many spoilers, but there was another character who had, um, she did, uh, the author wrote certain scenes from the first three books from another character's perspective. And I needed to see more of that character because in the third book, you yeah, I don't want to say too much because I was about ready to just totally give it away without even trying to give it away. So I read that and I think there were a couple of other little things, snippets and scenes like that. There wasn't really a lot to read in that. And then I mostly listened to uh, Memory Man by David Baldacci or Baldacci. I'm not really sure. Um, but basically that is about a man who... Um, he's a detective and then he comes home one night whole family's murdered gone like that happens in the first chapter not a spoiler um, whole family just gone and he ends up not being able to work because of this trauma that he suffered and you know he kind of holds out for a little bit then he becomes homeless um, and then like it's 18 months after the fact and I can't remember what happens exactly, but something happens with the case. That's what it is. So something happens with his case and then it all kind of starts rolling again and then there's this, things start to happen and they start to relate to each other and basically what happens is this his family's killer is kind of leading him on this um, goose, wild goose chase kind of. Like there's breadcrumbs all across the United States. And so he has to try to figure out what it means. Like the killer leaves these like taunting messages. And it is, it is just, it's good. Like if you like James Patterson, I really think that you would like this. The other interesting thing about Memory Man is that he suffered a concussion like it was more than a concussion like he he died twice on the field of a football field um had a huge head like he was hit so hard that his helmet came off and he suffered this head injury 
that does not allow him to forget anything. Nothing. Nothing is forgotten. Not at all. It's like a I mean, he remembers the most minute details from 10 years ago. And it's just, it is, it really kind of helps him, but also at the same time kind of hinders him. And they talk about that in the book because memory can be subjective. Like you think that you remember exactly how something happened, but that's not always how it works out. So that's what I've read in the last two weeks. I am about a quarter of the way through um, a book called The Lovely Reckless. Actually, I can probably bring up the... The cover for you but it is a young adult and again not ruining anything but um this girl watches her boyfriend die but she can't remember anything about it she has like um post-traumatic stress amnesia she can only remember parts of it so it's called the lovely reckless by cami garcia i'm about a quarter of the way through it it's pretty good so far um the only thing is, is that uh well, I'm not, I'm not positive about that, so I won't go into that, but it's really good. Only a quarter of the way through. It's kind of like a, um, Save the Last Dance. Save the Last Dance is a good example. Um, rich white girl ends up going to the not so great part of town and she's in this high school that requires security guards and kids are always getting invites kind of situation and it involves street racing. So basically substitute ballet for street racing. Same thing. So after that, I don't know what I really feel like reading. I seem to really, really be on a mystery kick. I said that I was going to read this one last time we talked, Winter Blaze by Kristen Callahan, but I haven't got around to it yet. And I really need to because I really like the series. I had... <sighs> If you're a reader, you totally, if you're a reader and a cross-stitcher, you totally understand because, like, I really want to read, but I really want to cross-stitch. And yes, I do audiobooks, but that only, that only works so much. But I have The Enemy by Lee Child on uh, loan from the library in audiobook form, so I think I'm going to read that one. This one is only 120 pages. It's super short. Um, but it's The Trial by Maxine Pedro and James Patterson. It's one of his book shots. They're 120 pages or less. So, and that is part of the Women's Murder Club series, which I have pretty much all but given up on. I won't, this is only like a $4 purchase, uh, but I will not purchase his hardcovers or the $14 eBooks. So I will check those out from the library. Then maybe, maybe, maybe. I'll read 13 Minutes by Sarah Pinbarrow. I actually had to order this book from the Book Depository. It was released in the UK, has not been released in the United States, um, but it was advertised on Goodreads. It was in my promoted books, and basically what happens is this girl falls into a lake in winter I think and she dies for 13 minutes but then when she wakes up she knows that she didn't just fall through the ice she was pushed through the ice so then she has to kind of decide you know who did that and why who wants her dead so I think that's what I'll do so lots of stash well no not really lots it's down quite a bit mm. lots of plans busy weekend ahead. So, let me know. Ew. Okay, now I think that's on purpose. Let me know what it is you're doing, what, is you, what it is you're stitching, what it is you're reading, whatever it is. Let me know below. We'll talk to you later, guys.